Or is it just, this is a stupid shit. That was, I, there's no one on the desk. I scared everyone. So is entrepreneurship for you or are you better suited as an employee working a job for some company? That's a serious question. Some people are better for one thing. Some people are really would prefer to have a job and all that. Some so. think they want one or they think they want the other, but their, their personalities, everything, their goals are best suited for another one that they think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is actually a proper question that you need to answer for yourself. Yes, you need to answer for yourself. I want to start with this though. I want to start by saying who entrepreneurship is not for and the big one there's a big misconception about this a very big misconception about this entrepreneurship is not for those people who want the easy way there is a misconception that entrepreneurship is the easy way to riches and fame the easy way to millions of dollars and the easy way to get this and that the easy way entrepreneurship no you are the person who will fail the hardest you are the person who will get fucked over the most. You are the person who will regret it the most and have the most scorn towards entrepreneurs. It's like, oh, that shit wasn't a piece of cake. Can I counter that? Yes. And just saying that for me, my life back in the day as an employee was way harder than what it is now. Mm. But it's because I am made to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm, and like I that. actually am doing what I love. I'm yes. working hard. But I'm doing what I love, so it's not hard. Mm -hmm. It's really not hard. Right, like that. Perspectives. Uh -huh. That's a different perspective, and you're absolutely right. Other people that. would see this and be like, that's hard, I can never do that. Yeah. And I'd see their job, and I'd be like, that's hard, I can never do that. People literally tell me, like, to my face, like, I envy your work ethic. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's as if that's hard. Like, the, to me, it just isn't. Difference in personalities. So there is nothing easy about this shit. The entrepreneurship life requires the sacrifice. People don't understand what sacrifice even means. It's not giving up Netflix. It's a lot more than that. It's honestly shit that 99% of people won't do. And okay, if you're watching this video, you probably think you fit into a certain category, but 90, this is real, 99% of people fit into the job life. Mm -hmm. It's only about 1% of people who are actually made for the entrepreneurship life. And like, cause that's also how the world is skewed right now. But 99% of people are workers. But of the people watching these videos yeah. and that are interested in entrepreneurship, most of you guys are the one percenters uh, that are made for it. Maybe it's 50-50, maybe it is 99% of people watching this. Because you are watching our videos for a reason because we talk about entrepreneurship, so you're clearly interested in it. But when I try to help my friends live my life just because exactly. I see they're not happy, I'm super happy, I just want them to feel the same way, mm -hmm. and I try that, that's when I can really see, yeah, you're, yeah. you're not, exactly. you're not the, the same kind of person. Yep, yep, yep. So when you try to teach someone who is not an entrepreneur or has that personality, to be that, it just doesn't work at all. We've tried it many times, like with our friends and family, and now it's gotten to the point where we don't try ever. We don't ever, like the best we'll say is like, cause we have friends who hit us up like, oh, you guys are doing great. This is awesome, you're in Bali, you live in this cool place. What is it you guys do? How do you do it? All this shit. And then normally I'd say, oh, we do publishing. Let me show you, this is how you do keyword research. Look at how much money you can make. You put this in, you get this money out of it. Oh, royalties for a lifetime, it's passive income, all this shit. Now I've learned complete, utter fucking waste of time. Now the best I'll do is like, just go to our YouTube channel, in the description we have a resource to free training, check it out and then you can learn about it. The ones that will be successful in entrepreneurship are the ones that will find their way on their own. Yeah. I can't help you there, because then you're not major an entrepreneur if you, have, if you need someone to tell you. Yeah. That's what having a job is. You have a boss to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And now here I am telling you what to do to be an entrepreneur. It yeah. doesn't make any sense and it doesn't work. Yeah. And I've just seen from first-hand experience mm -hmm. that it never works. When they yeah. come to you asking as if I'm their boss and yeah. they're an employee and they want me to tell you what to do. Entrepreneurship is doing everything yourself, finding the answers yourself. It's not having someone tell you what to do. You, Entrepreneurship requires a completely different level of thinking. And that's why a lot of people are made to have a job and that's mm -hmm. fine. But There's I want nothing wrong with it. I want to talk about how do you know if you are not made to have a job? Mm -hmm. And all I can really do is tell about my own experiences. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not made for it and I can tell you about how I feel and what I went through. In the end, it's all based out of what you want. Yeah. It's all based on your goals. This is always what I say. Like when, when we try to problem solve anything, the first question both of us always answer, and it's definitely like the best approach is, okay, what do you want out of this? Whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I want to start going to the gym. Uh, what do I do? Okay, what do you want out of it? And then you start working backwards and figure out what approach to take. 
Do you want a life with low risk where you're not taking chances, where you kind of know what you're going to get mm -hmm. and like you have a certain future? And it's easy case, and it's relaxing to an extent. Yeah. I don't know if relaxing is the right word, but it's just, it's easy and you don't have to worry about much. You know what you're going to get other than probably financial. You problems. have certainty and you have comfort. Mm -hmm. Then a job is for you. But mm -hmm. how do you know a job is not for you? Okay, so let's just tell about our own personal experiences. Back when I had a job, in the morning when I had to get up and go to that job, that was the hardest shit I like ever went through, knowing that I had to fucking get up. I would wake up in the morning and just be like, oh, fuck, fuck. Not another day of this shit. You like, just hear the alarm and you're just dreading what's about to come. Like it was so, it was so bad. And also we were the most unreliable employees in the world. This is a if, big telltale sign. If people know us personally, I'm so fucking reliable and I stand by my word. But as an employee, I was so goddamn unreliable. They would tell me to come at this time. I would not, you could never count on me to show up. You never knew if I was going to be there. And that was just because I fucking hated being there. And it's not so much the work itself. I feel like there, even a job, like I love, I don't know, going to the gym. I love basketball. These are just examples. Even if I had a job training people at the gym, even though I do love it, I would fucking hate to do that because I have someone else to tell me what to do. I'm not on my own schedule. I have to listen to someone else and I just can't live that way. So like no matter what, like the actual thing it is that I'm doing, just the fact that someone else is paying me and telling me when to be here and what really needs to be done. How demoralizing is that? It yeah. just takes away <clears throat> your masculinity. It puts you in a beta level. The way That's how are. I feel. That's my opinion. Look, the way we are, we just both, we just I always have to be the top dog making mm -hmm. the decisions and mm -hmm. telling other people what to do. Oh. That's just how I am. If I were to move into a house, kind of like a mastermind house, I have to, even an entrepreneur mastermind house, mastermind house full of other entrepreneurs, I have to be the one that owns the house and makes the rules and decides shit. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. I like having that responsibility. And the other people in the house would probably be the same way. Yeah, they're probably the same house. That, right. That's why they butt heads a lot. Of course, if you're coming up and I follow just a lot of higher level people, I would know my role to not be that way. Right, right. But just the way I am, I have to get to that point. Uh -huh. I want to be the top dog. I want to make all the decisions. I want to tell people what to do. And when people tell me what to do, I take that very badly. Uh -huh. I when people tell me what to do, I don't like to do it only because you told me to do it. Yeah, I that's was, just me. I, that's just that's just how my how my personality is. Is it a character flaw? Probably no. I don't think it maybe, is. Maybe maybe not. I'm very rational about it. I'm very, very rational. rational about it. But yeah, I've had this experience before. No, yeah, we're not crazy. We're not just stubborn. But where I wanted this is going to be contradicting what I just said. But I was going to do something, and then someone else told me to do that. Now I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. I also want to say that this thing, like uh, how you feel in the morning, how you do at your job, like how reliable you are, it stems from motivation because we have two, we've had two phases in our employment life. We've had our employment life where we didn't have motivation and we didn't know why we were doing it or what was going on. That's when we were super unreliable. We always lost jobs because we didn't show up. Shit like this was the both of us. And then there was the second phase of our employment where we were employed and we were the exact opposite, where we were the best employees because we had motivation. And, and it played did, in our goals. It played into our goals of entrepreneurship and we knew why we were doing it. We were doing it to save up money to invest in books to start a publishing business. So then, like both of us, then we were the best employees because there was motivation, there was fucking drive, there was goal, there was a reason to do this shit. Do not get it wrong. I do not think jobs are a bad thing. Even no. for entrepreneurs. No. I always tell people this, mm -hmm. if you want to build a business, you need to have money to invest. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it out of the fucking air, paying it off trees. You need to have a job to make that money. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was for us. I was super motivated to work and get as many hours as I could to get that money to invest in publishing. Mm -hmm. In that way, yeah, I was very reliable as an employee, but that's because it played into entrepreneurship. It played mm -hmm. into, I was using yeah. to invest in my own business. It was a part of the plan. I was motivated. It was literally to the make that money. It was the first step in the plan. Yeah. So then it was like, all right, let's fucking do this and yeah. let's go all fucking out. Working the most hours, showing super on time. Killing super on time. Super, super, on, super time. on time. There's on time where you show up exactly at the time. Then there's super on time where you, do where you also show up exactly on time. Yeah. A job is for people who want the easy way. That's honestly what it is. People who want the easy way and don't, there are a lot of people like this who don't feel this need to be anything special. You just want to be yourself and just make, enjoy life. Make $70,000 a, a year uh -huh. and just by doing that you can achieve like your maximum level of happiness. Go then on. the job is absolutely for you Go. and I'm super happy for you that, yep. that you are that way. Go on right. one vacation a year, all these things. The people that a job is not for 
is for people who are honestly like, I will do anything for this shit. I will do anything for this shit. Because at a job, having that feeling, you literally just feel like a bundle of energy that you, you don't know what to do with. And it's like, it could turn really frustrating. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting at a job, like, I will do anything to all this shit. But there's nothing to do because uh, a job really limits or caps your potential. It, that, that it does. Let's just be honest, because a lot of people don't realize what humans and what anyone is capable of. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person who wants to, one, the spotlight, that's not true, because entrepreneurship and the spotlight don't necessarily go Some hand Some people hand. want to not be known. They you're want right, to be completely, right. like, no mm -hmm. one knows who they mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. That's not me. That's other mm -hmm. people that are still made to be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. you know? But, like, you want to prove people wrong. You want to be the fucking bows. You want these other things. All right, so I want to tell about... Our experience, how I know mm. that I am not made to be an employee. And I just want to tell like stories from the past about us and mm. how like more signs of that. The jobs that we've had and our experiences at them. Yeah. So I have never wanted a job, but there were times where I had to have a job. And this was kind of before I had, you know, like I was telling about the motivation for to fund my business where I was kind of motivated to work. But at this point I wasn't, but I still needed a job for money. So we would have to go out and send out, um, what's it called? Well, applications. Applications. So I'll do that and then like one out of 20 would reply. I'd be like so unmotivated to actually really try to get this job. Yeah. But I knew I had to. Can, right? we, can we walk through a timeline of like our job history and our experience at them? Sure. Oh, I have a very limited job history. Very limited. Yeah. Our first job ever was at 19 years old in Denmark working at a harbor like loading and unloading containers. We worked there for a few months before we got fired because we kept on just uh we would call in like now before like yeah uh, uh like uh, have my a thing tomorrow um, my oh we use our grandma a lot like yeah. who's gonna say no to like your grandma having only an something. asshole only, only an, an asshole. asshole so like oh yeah no my grandma is having a brunch tomorrow I have to come see my grandma I just can't come yeah. I just can't come to work tomorrow yeah there's no oh I sprained my ankle that one's kind of legit mm -hmm. but uh I can't come so then the point is we got fired because we kept on we calling were... out sick and not showing up unreliable properly. and I would have fired me too of oh, course I would and, and then at lunch we were just in my weeds stoner days yeah at lunch we would just nap. We oh, would yeah. just nap at lunch, and then it's one o'clock now. Back to work, like, oh. Fuck. Every day was counting down the fucking seconds until four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Every fucking day. Okay, so then the next job, I got a job uh, as a busboy slash bartender at like this bar, also in Denmark. Also in Denmark, and I'll just quickly tell how that went. That was the worst job I've ever had because yeah, it was a night shift starting. I didn't at have it, so I don't even know what this. Eleven was like. p.m. to six a.m. That was the worst job I've ever had working with drunk pe drunk really? people. It was so bad. And that I also got fired from for the exact same reason because like. Oh, here's your shift, and I'd always be like, I can't do that shift. Good. Didn't you have to work I, once every other weekend? It was once every other weekend. It was one shift every two weeks. Yeah. That was a job that you had. I, th I worked. In your mind, that's a job. Yes, that was a job. <laughs> I think I worked five shifts, or six, or seven. For the amount of times that I've heard about it in my life, I would have thought you worked much more. Yeah, no. Some people would be it like, felt like so much. Some people would be like, oh yeah, that did happen. For you, that was like a big stage. That, that was, was a job that you that had. That was one of the biggest jobs I've had in my life, mm -hmm. these seven shifts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just hated it so much that I was like, I can't show up. I just can't do this. <laughs> it was literally, my explanation was literally like, I just, I just can't. Okay. I can't come in because I hate it so much. This is too bad. Yeah. And then next jobs, oh, there was like, oh, we can't find a stable job. So then we worked at this uh, bureau. You're just like on demand and they call you here, go here. They need substitutes. Sweeping Labor floors. that any retard could do. Exactly. Which was us at the time. Yeah. Well, how did that end? Also, oh yeah, we did it left for like two months and I called like, stop calling me. Yeah. Stop calling me. Like, I hate They're doing this. They're just bothering me in the morning while I'm sleeping. And at this point in our life, uh, we were very broke. I mean, very broke because we weren't having income from, because we didn't work many hours, many jobs, but we were able to sustain ourselves. Like the laziest motherfucker in the world. I really thought I was a really lazy yeah. piece of shit. But our parents paid for rent. So that's how we were able to survive. So we so we use these few hours we work to pay for food. Yeah, I um, could just scrape by. Yeah, food and weed. Fucking low life yeah. piece of shit we uh -huh. were. So, and then eventually we separated for like two months because you had to go back to the US. I was living in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, I bottomed out, smoked a lot of weed, really bottomed out. Then I realized this is fucking pathetic. Mm -hmm. I'm pathetic. And then we met up again and then we talked. We're, we met, the, we found this guy online named Stephen James. These all people, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. And that's when everything changed. Then we both, then I've had two jobs since then. So I've had five in my life. And then I worked as a uh, assistant 
at a physical therapy, physical office. therapy office, and I was the only reliable worker there. Mm -hmm. They kept on going through other secretaries slash assistants, like clockwork, and then they, they always just sucked. They That's because they were at time. the previous stage that we were they at, where well, they had no motivation to be reliable. Exactly. So I was just, I was the, the solid concrete guy. So I worked there for a year, saved up a lot of money. I used that money for publishing. Then I worked another job, uh, delivering Chinese food. That was your main thing. That was my, that was my only job that I we had. We were also the best Chinese food delivery. Was delivering Chinese food. Oh, I was yeah. so good at it. Yeah. And it was pretty great just driving around. Listening. I could smell the food, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lick, listening to podcasts. We'd listen to music. podcasts, educating ourselves about entrepreneurship and publishing. I would always show up like 10 minutes early to the job yeah. and like work overtime yeah. because I was motivated too. I've already said that. And then with those two jobs, then also we were going to college. Mm -hmm. And then having absolute straight A's in college, four semesters, the worst grade we ever had in over 50 classes was an A yeah. between the both of us. But look, we kind of changed like that from it lazy did fuckers it. Yeah, it changed to like hardworking, that. reliable people. Yeah. And it started from the motivation where we both we were both like, we looked at each other. This shit like, is done. We're not fucking losers. Everyone's telling me we fucking suck. Even though we've been fucking losers our whole life. it's true that we are, but that shit changes now. Yeah, because we could do something about it. We yeah. realized we were in control of our lives. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why having each other was like the biggest you could talk, yeah, it's like talking Thing to each other. other. That's kind of like our story with jobs and how we knew it was not for us. It all happened because motivation. We suddenly had the motivation. We had a reason. We had our why. Like, why am I doing this shit? I'm doing this shit so I don't want to be a fucking loser anymore because it hurts so bad. Like, literally being invisible. Mm -hmm. Fucking invisible. So if you're like us and you feel that way, then entrepreneurship is for you and you're willing to put in the work. I want to end on one thing, on two things. Mm -hmm. Can we quickly tell both of our really awkward job interviews that we had. Okay. We both had super awkward job interviews. It's like the only one I've ever really been to. All the ones were just through applications. To give an idea of the people we okay. were. So I sent an application to a restaurant. I wanted to be a busboy at a restaurant. And uh, I didn't want to, but it was there as an option. So you it had to apply. Kind of. I had the, no skills. So like I, I fit. Mm -hmm. It worked. One of those minimum wage jobs. Hey, but oh, it was so sad. I showed up and it was just me and like the owner. And then he asked me like the most simple questions. And at that time I was... Very shy, very self-conscious, very low self-esteem. No that confidence. Shit. No Didn't confidence in yourself at all, at all. So I showed up. Um, Thought you couldn't provide any value. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And he said he he asked questions like, "What are your strengths? What are you good at?" Mm -hmm. I was like, um, "I'll show up on on time." And then just awkward silence. I had no idea what to say. And then he asked like, "Okay, well, what are your weaknesses?" And I was like, oh, "Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, okay, okay. I'm very bad at communicating." I don't want to talk. I just want to be told what to do. I don't want any responsibility. Okay, can you do that? He was like, well, you got to be able to like communicate with like your people. I was like, no, no, I want one where I'm just in the back, not talking to anyone. I was like, yeah, but you got to like take orders at the table. So I'm like, I don't like talking to people. I don't want to, I don't think I can do that. Mm -hmm. Seriously, seriously. It was really fucking awkward. And he asked other random shit and it was just, ugh. and I was like, okay, thank you for that. I'll call you if we need you. I'll call you never again. That was what were you saying I after? Ever. Were you thinking like, that was fucking embarrassing? Yes, oh, okay. 100%, it was so embarrassing. And never heard from it. I have a similar story, this was in Denmark. We were, we were trying to scrape up some money. We need to get some money, so I'll go get this job. I found like, this job online as a telemarketer. So I went to this office for the interview, sit down, he's like in a suit and everything, and then he goes through a you whole- You show up like this, like, yeah, I was like, just you have like no that. idea what's about to happen. I was right? wearing like a big winter coat because it was cold <laughs> and rainy, and I never took it off. And then he was sitting there in like a, a nice suit and tie, like super professional. And then he t this is all in Danish, by the way. So then he took like 30 minutes to explain his company. He was the owner, his company, what he's about, what he was just talking so much about like good shit, like what I'm about, what this business is about, what we value, what we look for in our workers, what we want to do to our customers, all this shit. Yeah, what were you thinking the whole time? I was just like, cool, cool. Well, at the same time, I always knew telemarketing I would hate because I suck at talking to people. Yeah. So, but then he was asking questions about myself, just very basic so that I could answer. But then he came up, he did the sell me this pen mm. uh, thing. Cause it's telemarketing, you're, you're selling things on the phone, but it was this, wooden Christmas tree figurine. I was like this big. He, he handed it to me and he said, sell this to me. Cause he's like, oh, I have to test your selling ability. Sell this to me. Of course. And then I literally just like held it, put it down. And it was just like, I froze up. I completely froze up. And then I said, like, uh, I don't know what to say. And he's like, it's okay. Just, just try to sell it to me. Like, just relax. It's cool. It's no big deal. Uh, this is not like some crazy exercise. Just sell it to me. And I was like, uh, 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 I just froze up for so long. I was like, I don't, I 
don't know what to say. I don't know how to sell you. I can't do this. I don't know. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. I, how do I sell this? I, I had such a lack of thing. brain capabilities at that time. Mm -hmm. And then he's, and then it was the interview ended there. Yeah. So he was literally just like, okay, so you understand that this is a telemarketing job where we sell things on the phone. I'm like, yes, but you can, you can sell that to me. I was like, no, like, okay. Well, then it's probably best that we don't waste both of our times. He said that mm -hmm. we, we don't waste each other's time and we could just say goodbye now. Like, okay, goodbye. See ya. Walked out there and it was super embarrassing and I felt like shit. I felt like I couldn't fucking do anything. Mm -hmm. Like I was just worthless. Yeah. I had nothing to offer anyone. Uh, but anyway, that was us talking about like how we are absolutely not made to have a job. And if you can relate to any of that, comment down below exactly how you feel about this, what position you're in your life, like why you think you're made for one or made for the other. And just please, let, I'd like to get some long responses, just letting out some feelings and some, some like genuine thoughts that you want to tell people, but maybe you can't tell people how you feel and things like that. Cause a lot of people aren't in that position where they don't have anyone to talk to. Uh, I want to be that person you can talk to. Yes. Those people. Yes. So what should the magic emoji of the day be for that? Uh, let's do a sun. Drop the sun emoji. The sun is one of the symbols that I like the most because it symbolizes like light and brightness and hope. This is genuine. I actually want like a sun tattoo because I actually really like suns and what they symbolize. So drop the sun emoji and yeah, that's that. See Thanks you for watching video. the video. Subscribe, comment, like, blah, blah, blah. More videos. We just talk about entrepreneurship because that's what we're passionate about. Okay. Thank you.